Hi friends and relatives. I have something really special for you today. Look at this. He's peeing. I'm going to hold it on this towel. This is a box turtle. Mr. Steve just found him at the top of my driveway in the road. So we're going to take him and put them put him back in the backyard where it's nice and safe for him. We're going to put him in the backyard. And this is a boy. And how can I tell? Can you see? Can you see how his shell is really indented? That is a boy turtle. And look at the pretty colors on his shell. Can you see the patterns that it makes? You can see the yellow and the brown. And you can even see little swirls inside his shell. He's not coming out right now because I'm holding him. I'm going to put him down in a plastic box and if he comes out, I'll, I'll show him to you. You can see his head because he's been really trying to get out in that, that plastic box. But you can see right here where his little claws are. Can you see that, the little claws? Okay, I'm going to put him down and I figured we'll do a book. It's actually a online book and it's called Franklin's Blanket. Franklin is a box turtle. And we have a couple of Franklin books at school, but I don't have any here. So I'm going to put him down now. Look at how cool it is. And hopefully he'll come out of his shell. Do you know why they go in their shell like this? It's for protection. Because if they couldn't hide their heads inside the shell, something might get at him and try to eat him. He would become prey. Remember we talked about that before? He would be eaten by maybe something that would like to eat his soft. It's very soft in there. The skin is soft. His, so they could get at him very easily. Okay. I'm going to put him down. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he'll come out and we can see him. So now... I have, see that? It's Franklin's Blanket. So let's put it on and you can listen and watch the pages turn. Alec Bourgeois and Brenda Clark. Franklin could slide down a riverbank all by himself. He could count by twos and tie his shoes. He could even sleep alone as long as he had a good night story, a good night hug, a glass of water, a night light, and his blue blanket. In the beginning, the blanket was big and soft and edged in zen. But with all the snuggling and cuddling, it now had holes in the middle and tatters along the edges. Every year as Franklin got bigger, his blue blanket got smaller. Franklin usually kept his blanket folded in his top drawer. One night it wasn't there. Franklin searched around his room. He rummaged through his toy chest. He took everything out of his drawers and his books off his shelves, but he could not find his blue blanket anywhere. He ran to tell his parents. Go back to bed, they said, as soon as they saw him. But, but, said Franklin. No buts, said Franklin's mother. You have had a good night story, a good night hug, two glasses of water, and I turned on your nightlight myself. But I can't find my blanket, said Franklin. So Franklin and his parents hunted everywhere. Try to remember, said Franklin's mother. When did you last have it? Franklin thought in the morning, after a fight with Bear, Franklin had snuggled with the blanket until he felt better. In the afternoon, when the thunder crashed and lightning flashed, Franklin had covered himself with the blanket until he was calm. He was sure that after the storm, he'd put the blanket back where it belonged. When Franklin and his parents looked, the blanket wasn't there. We'll find it tomorrow, said Franklin's mother. I can't sleep without my blanket, said Franklin. I have an idea, said Franklin's father. He left the room and came back with an old yellow blanket. What's that, said Franklin. It was mine. 
said Franklin's father. Maybe it will make you feel better. Franklin tried to snuggle the old yellow blanket, but it wasn't the same. He missed his own blanket terribly, and it took Franklin a long, long time to fall asleep. The next morning, Franklin began a search for his blanket. He went to Bear's house first. He looked so glum that Bear asked, What's wrong, Franklin? Did your mother give you Brussels sprouts again? Worse, said Franklin. I can't find my blanket. It's not here, said Bear. Besides, my mother says big bears like me are too old for baby blankets. Maybe you don't need a blanket. Franklin knew that Bear always slept with his stuffed bunny. What about your bunny? Asked Franklin. Bunnies are different, said Bear. Next, he tried Fox's house. The blanket wasn't there either. Why don't we play, asked Fox. No, said Franklin. I want to find my blanket. My father says worn out blankets are no good to anybody, said Fox. Maybe you should get a new blanket. I did. I like my old blanket, said Franklin. Then Franklin went to Beaver's house. The blanket wasn't there. Franklin looked so sad that Beaver said, you can borrow my teddy until you find your blanket. Thank you, Beaver, said Franklin, holding Teddy tightly. That night, when Franklin went to bed, he had his father's yellow blanket and Beaver's Teddy, but it wasn't the same as sleeping with his own blue blanket. At breakfast, Franklin's father sniffed and pinched his nose. Do you smell something odd, he asked? A sort of musty old sock smell? Franklin reached under his chair and pulled out his blue blanket. Plop! A handful of cold, slimy Brussels sprouts spilled out of the blanket and onto the floor. His mother and father stared with amazement. Look, said Franklin, I found my blanket. I forgot I put it here. You forgot to eat your Brussels sprouts too, said Franklin's mother. Oops, said Franklin, looking a little sheepish. Old, cold Brussels sprouts sure do stink, said Franklin's father. All Brussels sprouts stink, said Franklin. Franklin's mother smiled. I used to hate cabbage, she said. Now that's a stinky vegetable. Asparagus, said Franklin's father. That's even stinkier than Brussels sprouts and cabbage mixed together. Broccoli, shouted Franklin. Then he stopped. He liked broccoli. It stinks, but I wouldn't hide broccoli, he said. That's good news, said his father. Franklin helped tidy the mess. Then Franklin picked up his blanket. I don't care that you're old and full of holes, he said, but you sure do need a bath. That night, before his goodnight story, his goodnight hug, and a glass of water, Franklin put his father's yellow blanket back where it belonged. He was glad he lived in a house where even old blankets had their special place. That end... So that is the story of Franklin the Box Turtle and his blue blanket. I know a lot of my friends at school, they have special blankets and special toys. So I'm going to get the box up and look at, can you see he's out? He's got his head out. Let's see if he'll stay out. You see his head? He's out a little bit. And he's got the colors on his back, just like Franklin Shell. Look at his face. Can you see him? He's looking right at you. So now I am going to put him back in this little box. And Mr. Steve is going to take him back outside so he can go be in, his, in the wild and go back to his habitat where he lives. There he is. Any cool? I really love turtles. They're so neat. We have to protect them too. Unfortunately, when they go across the road, cars run them over and squish them. So we don't we want to make sure we keep our eyes out for turtles going across the road too. Say bye. Say bye. Bye friends. Have a good afternoon.